The latest major update from Capture One has just been released, version 16.7, and in this video, we'll be going through all the new features, talk about the pros and cons, and find out whether this update is worth your money. The first new feature is Combine Masks. Capture One now lets you add, subtract, and even intersect different masking types, giving you much more flexibility when refining your local adjustments. To demonstrate, let's edit this photo. I'll start by targeting the sky to get a smooth transition between the bright sky and the darker landscape for a more natural look. I'll use the gradient tool. To create a new adjustment, I'll click the Add button, which creates a new layer. Alternatively, you can just click any of the masking tools directly to start your adjustment. I'll right-click on the layer, choose Add, then select Linear Gradient. Next, I'll position the gradient around the horizon. I'll lower the brightness. As you can see, it gives a pretty good result. On the other hand, it's also darkening the subject. Viewing the mask by pressing M on the keyboard, you can see why the gradient is including the subject in the mask. No problem with the new Combined Masks feature, fixing this is easier than ever. I'll right-click on the Adjustment layer again. I'll choose Subtract, then Subject. And there you go. The subject has been cleanly removed from the mask and is no longer affected by the adjustment. You'll notice a new sublayer has been created under the adjustment layer. Next, let's brighten the foreground, and the process is pretty much the same. I'll create a new adjustment layer and add a subject mask. Then I'll include the foreground object using AI Select Object. And there you go, the foreground mask is done. Just like before, all these masks are automatically added as sublayers under the main adjustment layer. Next, let's look at another example. Again, I'll use a gradient to lower the brightness of the sky. Instead of clicking the Add button, I'll create an adjustment layer by clicking the Gradient tool directly, which is another way of doing the same thing. And there we go, the layer is created. I'll lower the brightness. Next, let's remove the dredging vessel from the mask, which is incorrectly being darkened. Unfortunately, subtracting the subject won't work this time because the Capture One Select subject is not smart enough to recognize the vessel as a subject. No problem, we can use an alternative. I'll take advantage of the vessel's distinct dark color and use luminosity masking instead. I'll right click on the layer, choose Subtract, then Luma Range. Next, I'll move the handles to target the darker tones so the mask is limited to just the vessel. I'll click Apply. And there you go, a more refined adjustment. Viewing the mask in grayscale, you can see that the vessel is now correctly excluded from the mask. So that was the new Combined Masks feature. As you've seen, it makes masking in Capture One much more intuitive and powerful. The next new feature is Retouch Eyes and Teeth. As a quick reminder, just last June, Capture One introduced Retouch Faces, an AI-powered tool that allowed for automatically removing blemishes and evening out skin tones. If you haven't seen it in action, do check out my review on that release. As you can see here, it works pretty well. Now in version 16.7, this tool now has become even more powerful, able to retouch not just the skin, but also the eyes and the teeth. To retouch the eyes, simply go to the Retouch Eyes section. I'll drag the iris slider to increase the brightness and clarity of the iris to make it really pop. Similarly, I'll increase the Sclera slider to brighten the whites of the eyes. As you can see, the effect looks pretty good and works very accurately. You can also tweak the teeth by adjusting its brightness and saturation for that perfect million dollar smile. Very useful. Just like with blemish removal, the main benefit of eye and teeth retouching is it doesn't require 
any masking steps, making it a much simpler tool to use than people masking, while also eliminating the need for third-party retouching apps. The third improvement is people masking enhancement. As a bit of background, Capture One introduced people masking in October of last year, 2024, in version 16.5. As with Lightroom's people masking feature, it allows for automatically creating masks for different facial features like hair, lips, eyebrows, etc. In December 2024, people masking was further improved to include masking of the iris and sclera, further enhancing its capabilities. Well, in this release, Capture One hasn't rested on its laurels. Once again, people masking has been improved, this time to include masking of clothes. And as you can see here, it works pretty well. So there you have it, the three new features in the latest Capture One 16.7 update. Now the big question, should you upgrade? Well, if you've been following this channel, my answer might sound very familiar. And that answer is, if you're heavily into portrait photography, maybe you shoot weddings or portraits regularly, my answer would be yes, particularly if you find it an extreme pain to remove blemishes and enhance skin in a multitude of photos. As you've seen, Capture One has been laser focused on the retouch phases and people masking feature, which have been the biggest new features of the past year. Plus, with the addition of eye and teeth enhancements, Capture One can now do even more, giving you more bang for the buck. That being said, this recommendation is not a slam dunk, since you could also choose third-party alternatives like Skyloom's Aperty, Retouch For Me, or Reblum, which might offer more value and performance over a new Capture One Perpetual license, which costs a whopping $368. On the other hand, if you are not a portrait photographer and do not find retouch faces or people masking essential in your workflow, I'd say no for several reasons. First, Capture One hasn't added any major new functionality which can close the gap with its competitors. Things like sky masking, AI denoise, AI object removal, AI upscaling, etc. are features that could really move the needle, yet Capture One has not made any moves to include. In addition, the current flagship new feature, Combine Masks, while it is a nice workflow improvement, is not really a huge leap forward. Previous versions of Capture One, even as old as two years ago, already allows you to add or subtract AI object masks, brush masks, gradient masks, and even luminosity masks just with a less intuitive process. So combined masks is not really a big leap in functionality as you might think. The only truly new masking feature is the ability to add or subtract a subject mask from an existing mask. But is that feature alone worth $368? I don't think so. It would have been better to see something really new, like sky masking, or improvements to subject masking's accuracy. Speaking of subject masking, it's worth noting that competitors like On One Photo Raw and DxO Photo Lab both of which cost far less than Capture One, have made huge strides with their subject masking tools. As you can see here, in this admittedly challenging example, Capture One's subject mask struggles to produce a clean, accurate selection, something which both On One and DxO Photo Lab can handle in its latest iterations. For software with such a huge price tag, Capture One's masking really needs to be best in class to justify sky-high price, and they need to make this improvement immediately. All this being said, if price isn't a major concern, and you just want a raw editor that's fast, polished, and reliable, then Capture One 16.7 is now more capable than ever, and I can easily recommend it. So I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know what you think about the latest Capture One 16.7 are you upgrading? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.